Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the guest has arrived. The guest has arrived. The guest has arrived. What's going on? Let me turn this down. Let me turn this down. And normally, I'm going to get right into it because these people have been patiently waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now tuned in to the TKB Report. I am your host, K. Langevin. And today's guest is definitely a friend to the show. He's like my brother. He's family to the show. He has turned into one of New Jersey's legendary DJs. He has become world-renowned over his time. The brother has not reached his peak as yet. He has put out productions and music and albums of his own. He's worked with some of house music's finest artists. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to, to the show none, none other than the world-renowned house music maestro, DJ Beloved. What's going on? Yo, man. <laughs> Crazy, <laughs> yo, man. What's up, man? Maintaining, man. Just you know, hey, man. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? The infamous. You got DJ Crunch in the building. You got a bunch of people in here from New York, what's Cali good? to Jersey, of course. All to see what's going on with you, uh, uh, Maryland. You got people from all over the place to tune in for this, man. Oh, that's what's up, yo. What's up with you, it. man? Hey, man, it's automatic, man. It's automatic. Um, no, keep the music th going. Th you know. Thank you for thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, man. I'm it's trying to start this second project, you know, my second album project. So um, right now, I've just been doing a lot of remix work. Yeah. Uh, a lot of collaborations. So that's been good uh, through the pandemic. You know, Keep them busy, man. Keep them focused. I mean, th this pandemic has created quite a bit of, you know, ha has created quite a bit of opportunities and, and, and windows and streams of, of entertainment, streams of revenue. I just want to say thank you to you and all the other New Jersey DJs that have been putting in work, man, helping people get through, you know, and helping them forget for a little bit, you know, when y'all come on and do your sets like you, DJ Mustafa, I saw you one time with DJ Low Man. Um, Jay Smooth, I was speaking to him earlier. Uh, you know, and the list goes on and on. I got DJs out in North Carolina, DJ All Night, DJ These Tracks in, in Savannah, Georgia, DJ Cut out in Atlanta. So just shout out to all the DJs for all the work that y'all been doing to just kind of keep people level-headed throughout all of this madness going on with the pandemic, with social injustice and things of that nature, man. So, um... I want to get into it, man. Uh, I mean, you're obviously known for playing music, man, but this is a different segment. I want to talk about your production and the music that you actually put together. Uh, so can you tell me, like, what's the, what's the frame of mind a producer has to have when he's um, trying, to create, trying to create some, some, uh, some new material? Well, for me... Um, being that I, I, I'm a DJ and a dancer, I, I try to create music that, first and foremost, that I would want to dance to. Secondly, that I would want to play. Um, that's what's always been my formula. Um, and it's worked over the, you know, over the, t over the time I've been doing it. Um, and then, you know, you have projects that are sent your way that that kind of just make you push your envelope musically. You know, they make you they make you approach things differently and and, and try to you know get about your comfort zone, which is good. Um, so that's that's normally the approach I take. So let's talk about let's talk about one of one of your um, DJ Mustafa. Shout out to DJ Mustafa. Uh, let's talk about one of your first, up, your first time you sat down to create, first time you sat down to create uh, a track that was a BPM production. What was that? What was that project? That song? 
Hold on. I ain't getting nothing. You said it paused up on me. Oh, okay. So I was saying, like, um, let's talk about the first, the first song that you either created or remixed. What was that song. process like? I don't even, I can't even. No, that's a good question. I think we got a delay. Because I had, I had a bunch of little ideas. You said, what was the first song I produced? Yeah, what's one of the first songs that you produced? Yeah. Jesus. Kenny Bobby and the Light was one of my earlier projects. Um, that was an original. Uh... I did a remix for for Monica. That was one of my first like big remixes uh, for that song she did, uh, "Everything to Me." Yes. Um. That was that was like one of my first remixes, but my first original was Kenny Bobby and the Light. Shout out to Actually. Kenny Bobby. He's one of my all time favorite. You get you got any music queued up there that you could that you can get a people a sample of of of, of some some BPM music. Oh, actually, I'm waiting for uh, my computer to come up now so I can get into that part of it. All right, um, all right. Talk yeah, about working uh, with Kenny Bovian. Definitely uh, a legend. <clears throat> working with Kenny is, is like being in school. Okay. Uh, he's, 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 really, he's really a gifted person. Like, that ain't even talent. That's a gift. Yeah. Like his writing process is is like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, he sits in a chair with his eyes closed, like to the point where you think he's sleeping. Like he just sits still and in silence while the music is playing on repeat. And then he just perks up out of nowhere and just pops up like, okay, I'm ready. <clears throat> and goes in the booth and, <laughs> and just starts singing. Like... I've seen him do that on several occasions, like because I I not only worked with him like on my own projects, I also used to engineer a lot of his sessions. So I would have the chance to like work with him, even like if it wasn't my song, I would just be engineering the session for him. Um, and he's like he's he's that good, like he he is that good, you know. He he literally does like, sits this. I mean, it could be for like 10, 15 minutes while the track is just playing on repeat. And then he'll know exactly how he wants to, to, to block the song out. Like he'll start with the hook, he'll lay the hooks down, he'll do all the background parts, he'll layer it 16 to 24 times, make it sound real big and full. And next thing you know, he's like, all right, start from the top. And you start from the top and he just sings the whole song straight through. And like the first time he does it, you know, he um he'll like kind of like ad lib his way through it, and then he'll come out the movement, and that's when he actually grabs like a pad a pad and pen and starts writing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but his first pass at a record is like off the fly, just off the top of his head. You know, it's it's different. <laughs> so now working with working with a a legend of that magnitude, what was the mindset that you had? Like, how was it separating, okay, being a fan as opposed to being a producer and trying to create? Because a lot of times people get that all mixed together and they can't separate it, you know? So what was the process to you, you know, when, you, when you're sitting down and work with such a, a legendary uh, figure like Kenny Bogan? Nervousness. You know, I hope I don't mess this up. Like, what's what's your your thought process on that? I mean, there's 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 always gonna be a level of of nervousness, um, no matter what level of professional, like no matter what level you reach. Mm. If you don't get nervous at some point, like we're all human, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's a certain le set of nerves that come with being a performer or being in any realm of 
show business or where you have to get in front of people or, you know, I don't care if you work in corporate America, you know, the paper towel. If you have a big meeting, you know, you're nervous. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't feel like nervousness goes away. But as it pertains to working with, with several artists or different artists that are of a certain type, um, it really just comes down to, like, just being yourself. You know, if you're, if you're authentically yourself, then, then, you know, people are either going to like you and you're going to work well together or it's just not going to work. And that's just human nature. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've had I've had people that I really like personally, but we didn't work well together professionally, not because of a combative difference, just because our, our styles on that, in that realm didn't work well together. But we'll still go out and grab a drink. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has nothing to do with that. You know, one has nothing to do with the other. And as far as, like, Kenny is concerned, Kenny's going to make it work. Like, he's one of the people that he's going to make. So that's the good part about working with somebody like Kenny. Like, because he's so skilled in so many different areas of the music business, he just knows how to make it work. And that's and that's a gift. And that's what I mean when I say he's gifted. Like, he like I've heard, like like I said, I didn't just work with him on my stuff. I worked with him on on other people's stuff. So I've heard tracks that when I hit play was like, you want to sing for this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And by the time he finished, it was like, oh snap, like, you made me work. And that was actually a valuable lesson that I learned from him. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes there's the well, people get confused, and I have to tell this to people sometimes, unfortunately. It's not called the music friendship. It's called the music business. Hmm. Saying, and even when it comes down to me DJing, I have to tell that to people. Oh, come on, but we cool. All right, us being cool ain't got nothing to do with when my car note comes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, or when the phone True. delivers. You know what True. I mean? Because us being cool ain't got nothing to do with when you go to work. When you go to work, if your check is short, your boss don't say to you, oh, but we cool. That don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, Business is business. Business is business. So, you know, a lesson that I learned from Kenny was sometimes it's just, you just got to do what your job is to do. My job is to write good records and sing. That's his job. My job is to produce good music.